welcome to Future Choices. My name is Fran Snedeker, and I'm the producer and moderator of this educational series exploring issues around reproductive health, filmed at the LMC TV studios in Mamaroneck, New York. To set the scene for tonight's conversation, I'd like to share with you a, a short clip produced by some colleagues in Southern Africa. That is indeed quite a question. Why would the United States want to stand in the way of getting desperately needed family planning care to people in Zambia? The video references the global gag rule. And to help us under better understand th the reason that they are so intent on lifting the global gag, I am very pleased to welcome to the Future Choices tonight Dr. Isaiah Ndong, who's the, the Vice President for Programs for Engender Health. Isaiah, welcome. Thank you very much. Isaiah, what is the Global Gag Rule? The Global Gag Rule is a policy that was put in place by the Reagan administration in 1984. The policy denies U.S. foreign assistance, family planning assistance, to overseas NGOs. NGOs? non-governmental organizations okay, okay. Mm -hmm. that provide abortion services or that lobby their own governments to have favorable policies for abortion. This policy also denies family planning assistance <coughs> to foreign non-governmental organizations that even just provide abortion counseling or referrals for their own clients. And so th this uh, global gag rule has been in place ever since uh, the Reagan years? The global gag rule has been in place, was put in place in 1984. Mm -hmm. When President Clinton took over in 1993, the first thing he did was to lift the global gag rule. Mm -hmm. When President Bush came into power in 2001, mm -hmm. the first thing he did was also to reinstate the global gag rule. Okay, and w so what, um, we've had the global gag rule now for, for eight years. Uh, have we seen fewer abortions as a result? The proponents of uh, abortion, uh, those who oppose abortion, mm -hmm. intended the global gag rule to reduce access to abortion services. Mm -hmm. What has happened is that because it also reduce, uh, restricts family planning funding to overseas non-governmental organizations that are the primary providers of family planning services. Mm -hmm. It has reduced access to family planning mm -hmm. for many of the, other, of the women, young and old, who are getting pregnant because they don't no have access to contraception. It therefore, in fact, has increased the number of unwanted pregnancies and generally resulted in an increase in the number of unsafe abortions. Mm. And uh, can you give me some specific examples of uh, where you have seen the most destructive impact of, of the global gag rule? I was working and living in Ghana in 2003 when the gag rule was reinstated. Mm -hmm. And in Gender Health had as one of his key partners, the Family Planning Association of Ghana. Mm -hmm. This non-governmental organization was the primary provider of family planning services, especially in the rural communities, where access not only to family planning, but to all health services is very difficult. And where, in fact, their facilities were the only health facilities for those communities. So they not only provided family planning services, they provided other health services, including 
services for pregnant women, immunization services for children, prevention services for HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. As a result of the cut in their funding, they closed the largest community outreach program in Ghana, and as a result, millions of Ghanaians lost access, not only to family planning services, but to health services overall. And in fact, this organization did not provide abortion services. So, so why were, why did they uh, become not, not eligible for, um, for U.S. foreign assistance if, if they weren't providing abortion services? They refused to sign on to the gag rule because they felt it limited the choices and the rights of their own people to services that the people wanted and needed. Oh, so the, any uh, foreign NGO uh, has to, to uh, under the gag rule, has to sign that they will abide by it? To receive U.S. government funding, they need mm -hmm. to sign that mm -hmm. they will abide by the Mexico City policy or the gag rule. Mm -hmm. And so the, all these uh, clinics that were the only health facility in many, many small uh, villages throughout Ghana, were they, they were closed? Several of them were closed. And so the communities that these clinics serve lost, for many of them, their only health facility. Mm -hmm. And I have seen this in other programs mm -hmm. in other countries where in gender health works. Similar cases occurred in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Uganda, in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. the, the, the cut in funding didn't only cause clinics to close. The U.S. government was the main donor for contraceptives. Mm -hmm. It didn't only fund services, it funded contraceptives, it funded equipment, it funded organizations that provided technical assistance with training to these local non-governmental mm -hmm. organizations. So they lost not only services, but also they no longer had supplies mm -hmm. to continue to provide services, even in the facilities that stayed open. Now, why couldn't the, the supplies be funneled through other health facilities? The access, because the U.S. government also was the main donor of contraceptives mm -hmm. to the country as a whole, mm -hmm. cuts in it cuts in funding for family planning limited the amount of contraceptives that went into some of these countries. Mm -hmm. Also, some of these countries received direct supplies from the U.S. government without them having to go through their own countries and systems. And therefore, the direct cut of supplies to these organizations severely limited access mm -hmm. to services by their clients. And uh, this happened in, in all across the world uh, for any uh, country, any NGOs that were uh, foreign NGOs, not American NGOs, but foreign NGOs. Foreign NGOs. And the, it happened across the world. But mm -hmm. as you know, Africa south of the Sahara mm -hmm. has the highest need for family planning services. It mm -hmm. has the highest maternal mortality has the highest infant mortality and also has the highest prevalence of HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. So it was much more affected than other parts of the world. Mm. And, and made a lot more difference to th these countries that are, were like Ghana at the cusp of breaking into uh, not being a developing country but a, a, a mostly developed country. Yes, it made so it made the greatest the, the, the worst impact was felt by the least developing countries mm -hmm. who could least afford a replacement of the funding and support that they were receiving from the U.S. government. 